Uh, fuck, I forgot how to start. <laughs> I forgot how to start. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wookie, and I'm here with Zenron. Hello, everybody. And Shonen Archive is a show in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching every single Shonen Jump property uh, that is available to, us, available to us in English in some form until the day we both cease to exist from this mortal plane, starting with Gintama, which we're not talking about today because we didn't have enough time to do a full episode, and we unfortunately stopped right before a very bad episode. Yeah, truly horrendous episode, unfortunately. Yeah, so I, it didn't feel fair to get Tama to just do an entire episode where we do nothing but shit on one specific episode. <laughs> just absolutely dunk on it, yeah. Yeah, if it was an extremely good one, we would have no problem with it, but because it's not, we can't. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which we can't talk about because we have six episodes to talk about for the end of it. So that, of course, leaves us with today, Chainsaw Man, which is episodes three and four. We're actually going at a clip of two, we talk about it every two weeks. Totally on purpose, we swear. <laughs> Definitely by design. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be talking about Chainsaw Man episodes three and four today. Yay, get excited. So Zen, why don't you go ahead and tell us. About episode three of Chainsaw Man. So episode three, uh, we learn a little bit more about the public safety division and how they handle killing devils when Makima scolds power for killing the sea cucumber devil. Uh, they have like a little moment where Denji goes and buys himself a drink and power is petting this cat, and she tells the story about uh, her pet Meowie that got captured by a devil. Mm -hmm. And she wants to rescue Meowie, and then Denji like, at first doesn't give a shit about it at all, but um, he says he, he guesses that he doesn't care about cats, but he does care about touching boobs. And Power says, okay, you can touch my boobs if you get my cat. And then he says, fuck yeah, I love cats. <laughs> uh, um, and he's gonna, he says he's going to go and murder the devil. They uh, go out. Power says that she knows where it is, um, but that Denji will have to fight alone because she thinks he's going to use the cat as a shield. And then when we get there, uh, it turns out that Power uh, turns on him and knocks him out with a hammer in order to give him to the devil as part of the deal to save the cat. Um, Devil says Denji has gross blood and tosses him away. And he says he's going to fly out and uh, eat a bunch of humans. Right before he does that, um, he eats Meowie and also Power. And then Denji chases him down, uh, pulls his ripcord, turns into Chainsaw Man, and starts fighting him in midair. Mm. They have a big fight across the city. Um, one of my favorite early Chainsaw Man moments happens when Denji catches the car with the guy in it, and he says, I don't give a fuck about this guy, and he throws the <laughs> car back at him. That's um, a very good moment. And to yeah. be fair, he has stayed that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he gets hit by a giant attack, and the devil thinks that he's down for the count, but then he gets up, and you hear his chainsaw ripcord start again, and he uh, leaps from the rubble, and slices the bat devil apart. And then we end it with an ED by Maximum the Hormone. Everyone's favorite Death Note ED <laughs> creator, song, uh, song creators. Which I don't think I've heard them since. Actually, no, didn't they do the Frieza song? Oh, you know, they might have. I think they did. Yeah, they did do the, the Frieza, Frieza, Frieza song. Yeah, every, everyone's favorite Frieza song. <laughs> Yeah, love Maximum the Homo. So I was glad to see him here. The ending, the having different EDs, I bet is a pain in the ass to animate and plan for. But it is kind of nice to have a brand new ED at the end of every episode with a brand it new is, song. Yeah. I'm sure it was a nightmare logistically from like a design standpoint. But damn, yeah, it really damn. does. Yeah, it really does uh, slam, and it fits perfectly with the actual kind of feel of Chainsaw Man too. Kind of does a good bookend of everything. Uh, this episode right here, 
I, of course, liked it, because I, like, as I said previously, I think Power might actually be my favorite character from Chainsaw Man, at least part one, uh, not counting Denji himself, or maybe actually counting Denji. We'll see as we kind of go on, as I get to reevaluate all my everything, but I remember when I was reading it, I was definitely pro-Power as number one. Uh, but it was nice to kind of see them back in the early days of kind of seeing how they used to uh, act with each other. Like, Denji tries to farm some kind of a, like, an understanding between the two, but then he's immediately cut off. Because she's just like, oh yeah, why are you acting like that? That's dumb. And he goes, ah, I guess there just really is too much of a divide between us, the way we think. Because he starts talking about, um, uh... Bochi, and he just, like, completely gets shut down with the idea that he was going for. And that's enough for him to go, like, ah, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm trying my best here. It's just not working. Yeah. <laughs> His poor kid. Uh, this episode also had the flashback from when Pochi was waiting for him, right? Yes, it did. That was very adorable. I remember liking that a whole bunch. We don't get a lot of him anymore. <laughs> Spoochie is currently inside the heart. No, that's what he says. He says that, like, he lives on inside of him. And then she says, like, that's dumb. What does yeah, that mean? Like, oh, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. She's with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the, that's stupid. You're stupid. Why are you thinking this way? It's like, ah, uh, whatever. Women, <laughs> they're never going to understand. Um... <laughs> I forget, was it this episode or the previous one where he says, like, I can deal with hanging out with any woman as long as she's hot? (laughs) Or I can... Uh, Where he says, uh, as long as she looks good, I can make it work with anything. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Very funny, continuing this, and... (laughs) Yeah, I also love how much he immediately is willing to go save that cat. The second she says, like, well, what if I just let you touch my boobs? And he's just immediately like, hell yeah, let's do it. It kind of reminds me about how you know how there's, like, the meme panel of One Punch Man of the robot man standing up after someone says, like, I'll let you touch my something or whatever. I forget Uh what it is specifically. That, unironically, in a non-meme format, is this Chainsaw Man episode. (laughs) It is, actually, you're right. (laughs) That's how motivated he is by it. And yeah, I kind of like, he has very simple motivations, but in a way that makes me go, you know what? Completely go for it. I understand it. This guy is an idiot. Not the, but he's an idiot, but he's not the biggest idiot because he does remember right before he gets betrayed, like, hey, weren't, didn't you give me like this spiel about how you can't be close by because he'll like know you're there. So why are you here? And then she goes like, ah, damn it you're not a complete idiot. And then she immediately knocks him out right after because she's like, ah, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't call, catch up to my bullshit that I'm betraying you. Um, But yeah, he is a very simple man with very simple pleasures, and I understand that. <laughs> There's something nice to have a motivation where the motivation <laughs> is not <laughs> 100% in the frame of good. He's just the man who's out here trying to live his dream, and damn it, that dream yeah, he's includes... He's trying to do his thing. Yeah. Yeah. He's just trying to live his life. He finally has good shit on toast, and he just wants to feel a boob. <laughs> That's all he really wants. And I can understand that. And the fight stuff as well was great in this episode as it continues on. As I was like, I don't remember the Bat Devil being... A lot of early Chainsaw Man for me is like, I remember Denji just going super bloody, and that's about it. But how good this fight was, Like I was like, damn, did he really have that good of a fight against <laughs> the Bat Devil? Out of all yeah, things, the double fight is it was really good. Um, it it was adapted like a little too good almost. I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, yeah. it's unusual how good this adaptation is. Yeah, it actually, funny enough, kind of reminds me of whenever I see like <laughs> there is a point of where when you animate something too good, where you're like, "I don't remember the source material being that good." Yeah. <laughs> Where this happens a whole bunch and please don't shit down my throat. Please don't shit down my throat. This happens all the time whenever I see a clip of One Piece. <laughs> whenever. <laughs> Uh-oh. Whenever you they're like. It. I'm like, oh yeah, that fight was awesome. But then when they show the animation, these dudes are like going at like 60 frames per second. Smearing everywhere. There's like lightning going off. And I'm looking at it going like. I don't remember it being this good when I read it. 
<laughs> it did not look this like well done. It looked awesome, but it didn't look this awesome. And I feel like that's what I'm getting here with Bad Devil. Where I'm like, I remember this fight, but they animate it so they do such a good job of adapting it. Where I'm like, this feels like too good for what this guy is worth. But yeah. That's a very specific feeling. Please don't shit down my throat. I love One Piece. I'm going to go see, I'm going to go see the movie tomorrow. Uh, what do you feel about it, Zen? Uh, real good. Real good. Um, it was probably the best fight that we've seen so far. I really like that fight against the... I like Denji with like the torn open shirt with his little chainsaw ripcord thing hanging down. It's yeah. a good look. Uh, I, like, I really like the scene where he does like the dramatic pose, and then he's just saying that, why haven't I been able to cop a feel yet? <laughs> um, very funny reaction to the shit that he's dealing with. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, the Bat Devil fight was, like, adapted too well. They did, <laughs> they tried too hard. Doing too good of a job here. Man, I need you to tone it down just a little bit <laughs> to make yeah, it super I need you to take it easy. That just makes me feel more excited to see. Wouldn't it be funny, though, if, like, this obviously doesn't happen, so it's not going to happen, that they actually wasted all the money on the Bat Devil fight and <laughs> none of the <laughs> other fights? <laughs> They're like, well, oh, shit. We're out like, of options. <laughs> damn it. We put all our effort into the Bat Devil. Shit. Well, now it's just bad CGI from here on out. <laughs> Hopefully nobody notices. <laughs> I'm sure that won't happen, though. But yeah, good episode. And of course, this episode's name is called Meowie's Whereabouts. Very simple name for these ones, but let's move on to the next episode. Because next episode is episode four, Rescue. Another very simple title for them. Yeah, these are very simple. Compared to like Gintama, where I'm saying like, like, sent, like borderline poem feelings for the name of an episode about someone like punching a cat or something. <laughs> like, like, these are very simple titles for episodes. Yeah, this is a. This is a simple man's anime. We just we do what we love around here. Exactly, exactly. Um, Go ahead, Zen. Tell us about episode four. So we get a little flashback to uh, Power and Meowie in the woods again. Um, Power then wakes up, realizing that Denji, uh, in fact, saved her. Um... They kind of have a little talk for a minute. And she's like, why the hell did you save me? And he just points at her boobs and is like, you know why. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm about. Um, she says, okay. And then right before he tries, uh, the like leech uh, devil shows up and rips his uh, like arm off, just straight up like tears it off. Um He's getting fucked up big time by said leech devil. And then uh, we get kind of a mini fight scene because mm. he's hurting. He's real hurting. Um, he doesn't have like, he can't get his chainsaws out because he doesn't have enough blood to make them work. He gets like a little oh, he's, stump, stump chainsaw. Yeah, he's got a little chainsaw stump like on his head. Um, and so they do a little. A little battling. The Leech Devil's kind of kicking his ass and is like, um, our dream was to kill all humans like Bender from fucking <laughs> Futurama. <laughs> um, and that that's a good dream, alright? And he's like, well, my dream is to touch boobs and I'm getting really sick of people telling <laughs> me that my dream is whack. <laughs> um, and so they fight for a bit on that. Um... Denji kind of does pretty good, um, but does end up losing because he's just too wounded to fight. Um, and then Aki shows up and uses his devil contract to destroy the leech devil. Um, they kind of have a little like friend moment where they kind of like bro out in the hospital. Aki cuts an apple up for him while he's recovering. Um, and Denji kind of gives him, like, the, yeah, I know I'm kind of a dumbass. Like, I'm just kind of a little guy. Like, just <laughs> I'm just a little dude. But, uh, you know, I'm, we're on the same team, and you can, you can rely on me. And so he decides that he's not going to report power to Makima so that power isn't killed. 
Um, and then Makima instead makes Power move in with them. And we get the famous montage of Power being disgusting in Aki's house. Absolutely. With Denji in there. Um, and then uh, Power walks in and says that he is allowed to touch her boobs three times for saving Miaoi, for killing the Bat Devil, and for protecting her from Aki reporting her to Makima. Um, Denji gets all excited, and then the episode ends. Yeah, ends on the, the sickest cliffhanger imaginable. <laughs> <laughs> Find out next episode if he's going to get the three squeezes in. No spoilers from us. You're going to have to tune in on Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to watch on Tuesday to find out. Chainsaw Tuesdays. Man, I can understand why uh, <laughs> so many Dragon Ball dudes want their anime to come back. Because it is kind of awesome to be like, oh yeah, new anime episode, and then read the manga. And you're like, oh yeah, new chapter. This is great. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> Chainsaw Man Tuesdays. Yes, perfect. Catch it. Catch the wave. And then, of course, this ED is also another great ED because it's the power ED. This is the yeah, one where they're just like power, and it's just power in like different outfits dancing all over the place. Yeah, this is what the Rock was rapping about. It's about drive. It's about power. <laughs> this specific moment, in the hierarchy did you of the see the voice actress for Power did a little bit of the dance. Oh, really? I'll de- yeah. That's amazing. I could see this. Yeah, there's a video of her on Twitter doing some of the dance from the ED. Man, that's great. I love I let me just put it here that the fact that they reveal that power is 100% a gross gremlin did not dissuade anyone from liking power no, any less. Oh, no, didn't bother anyone at all. No. <laughs> they make it extremely clear that power's just like a gross fucking freak. Yeah, and she's everyone's like damn, she hot though. <laughs> yeah, she's like a crazy wooden animal. They show her in the beginning like eating that sucking the bear blood straight out of the bear head. Mm-hmm. It's right out of the bear. Doesn't want to bathe, doesn't eat she takes extreme dumps. <laughs> <laughs> just unbelievable nasty ones and yet people are just like, "Nah, man. <laughs> We're here for the power moment." That's honestly a <laughs> it's a it's a power move to every show to jump your <laughs> heroine out there. <laughs> It is maybe the most <laughs> powerful thing you could imagine. <laughs> this, this episode really is just like the this girl is fucking disgusting, and everyone's like hell yeah, <laughs> and I'm on that train. Yeah, huge fan favorite, and she's just gross all the time. <laughs> they Nasty. released a figure of her on the toilet seat, which I want to remind everyone is clogged by her shit. Yep, correct. <laughs> Releasing that figure for the best. I <laughs> love Chainsaw Man so much. <laughs> Chainsaw Man is really the best. It honestly is the best. It really is. And man, oh, this episode, uh, there's a lot for me to like in this one. Again, very power focused. <laughs> so I'm just going to like it in general. Good on that merit alone. On that merit alone, I love it. But I did like to see. Um, the fight with Denji, the when he's fighting this... First of all, this fucking leech devil is disgusting. It yes, has, like... Leech devil's fucking gross. They animated the nipples on this yep. leech, which just makes mm-hmm. it extra gross. On this fucking nasty leech monster. Mm-hmm. And not only that, they actually very well animated Denji getting fucked up. It's borderline, like... Almost like Deku would look at this and go like, "Damn, man, I think you're going a little bit too far <laughs> with how much as <laughs> you're getting beaten." Because he's at one point he's getting so beaten, his eye is almost coming out of the socket. Yeah, it's like hanging out of his head. Yeah, and he's still fighting like that, and he's just like ramming his head against it. And I was like, "Damn, okay, this is the good." Yeah, because this- in this fight, the only chainsaw that he has is in his forehead. Yeah, so he has to attack by like ramming his head into this monster. Yeah, he's just like a desperate trying. It's a it's a very desperate fight, and it reminds me of some of the best parts of Chainsaw Man, which is that Chainsaw Man is just straight up gross. Not only in the way that the characters sometimes are act or are, but in the actual like gore department, it's definitely up there for just how much you're just looking. And you're going like, uh, it's the sickening. Like there's a difference between like how <laughs> it's almost it's almost kind of like Fist of the North Star when you see like. Uh, can do his crazy moves and it just completely evaporates the body. It almost gets to that level. We have not mm-hmm. had this level of just disgusting action since Nasty the 80s. Nasty stuff. Yeah. 
So that fight was great. I like the end of it. I like it when Aki shows up and you get to see his little devil. And then he also reveals, like... They also reveal a little bit more of the world about how, like... Yeah, I don't like devils as much as anyone else. But the only way to really fight a devil is with a devil. So I'm with the... What is his... Is his devil the fox devil? Fox devil, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> the fox devil. Which, the fox devil looks awesome. <laughs> it's always looked awesome. Yes, it's really cool. <laughs> And man, it was great to see him uh, do some stuff because I also really like. Uh, I, I think this is a extreme power trio. These three right here are some of. In yes, terms of, the... there's a lot of shonen trios. A lot mm-hmm. of two guys and a girl shonen trios. Uh, this is one of the best ones for sure. Yeah, I, I would. It's definitely one of my favorite ones. I think they complement each other very well with the way that they act. Obviously, a lot of people, um, by a lot of people, I mean uh, <laughs> Naruto fans, like to call <laughs> a- Aki a Sasuke clone, but he's too, like, centered to the actual group, where he is too serious and he's too much like a dead mother to really, he's like the yeah, guy he's holding... Sort of the, uh, yeah, he's like the, the caretaker, like... <laughs> There's no yeah. Sasuke in that, you know? Yeah, there's, like, no roaming badass that also makes make sure that they eat their veggies. <laughs> there's, like, no way for... <laughs> there's just no way to do it. So when they got to act, the, when they're actually all together and they're hanging out, that was some of my favorite stuff as well, like the comedy bits. When she starts throwing away the vegetables, she's like, ugh, disgusting, never, give me more meat. And then Denji's immediate reaction, which I appreciate... He totally acts like someone who has only ever eaten bread for maybe 13 years of his life. Because <laughs> he's immediately like, hey, don't disrespect the veggies. Yes, I love when he goes. He literally, like, leaps across the fucking thing and he's like, carrot! <laughs> no. Apologize to the farmers. <laughs> You're acting terrible. And I love that. I love that specific dynamic. It was a good thing to show, just to show how much, like, yeah, he's this strong feeling about veggies. <laughs> like, I believe it, because of the way he, we've seen him kind of grow up, he just cares about it so much. I like this little speech there, where he's, like, tired of people, like, calling him out on his dream, where it's so simple, but he's like, whatever, what makes yours so much better? <laughs> it's bigger in scope, but that doesn't mean anything, because I care much about as much as I, as, as big as your stupid dreams are, my dumbass dreams, I care as much as you care about yours, so. it It's a weird, like, <laughs> it's a really weird argument, but I kind of see where he's going here, where it's like, just because you yeah, have grand... He's, just, yeah, he's like, uh... Just because they're broader in scope doesn't mean it's more valuable if I care about mine just as much as you do. Yeah, it's a total... It Again, it's another thing where when you think of a protagonist who has a dream of some kind, they're usually in some way trying to be for the betterment of people. Like, for example, the Deku's a good example. I think Deku's like the ultimate opposite of Denji in a lot of ways. Because Denji... I think I've said it before, Denji is the anime Charlie Bucket from... <laughs> Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, or the book specifically. (laughs) Because in the book version, they say Charlie Bucket is the goodest boy alive. He's so good, he wants to say hello to you. He says hello. Hi, Charlie Bucket. Like, that is basically what Deku is to me. (laughs) He's like the ultimate good boy. And then Denji is like Mike TV. (laughs) He is just an absolute asshole. But he's uh, a Mike TV. If he was the actual protagonist, he was a good guy. But there, there, there's a, there's a specific differences of it. Where Deku's specific dream is to become a hero, and then he wants to use it to save people. And Denji just isn't really interested in all that. He just kind of wants to live his life. And it's an interesting, again, it's an interesting way to kind of make your protag the way he is. In some ways, it can come off as extremely unlikable, and I've seen plenty of people not like Denji for the specific reasons of, like, oh, that's gross. Like, what makes him any different from uh, Ball Boy, from My Hero? And the main difference is, is that it seems that Ball Boy is way more creepy about it. I'll say that much, first yeah, of all. I think, like, <laughs> the difference with Denji and fucking Mineta, of all people, is that, like, uh... The, the whole world of Chainsaw Man is, like, screwed up, and Denji kind of navigating, like, his thoughts about the difference between sex and intimacy and what he actually gives a shit about is, like, kind of actually an important part of the plot, mm-hmm. because the vast majority of the plot is people who want to do wrong by him manipulating him with sex. Yeah. Power does it, Reese does it, Makima does it. 
Um, Very susceptible to it is the easiest yeah. thing. <laughs> it's the easiest thing in the world. Whereas uh, with the ball boy, his whole thing is just like <laughs> sex crime is funny. Like that's yeah. that's the joke. Kill me when you're 16, Ari, and it's like what you can't walk this back anymore. You've lost. <laughs> yeah, this you've gone too far. You've effectively you've killed this. <laughs> you've killed this character with one statement. But yeah, that's the main difference to me. Is that it, that's what I feel when and it's it's a difference in the nuances of it. And for some people, it's enough for them to be completely turned off because the statement alone is enough for them to go like, ah, oh, no statement like that should be made. But if you give it some time, I think you'll at least understand where it's coming from and stuff. To see that it's more than meets the eye, basically, is what I'm saying here. Yes. Um. But yeah, it was transformers, a, as it were. <laughs> Yes, roll out. Complete. Have you seen that video of uh, the <laughs> Optimus taking a shotgun to the old man Transformer? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's great. It was fantastic. You guys should also check that out, by the way, if you can find it. Especially that edit with the guy going like, no, Optimus, please, <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, the guy's like screaming. <laughs> yeah, Optimus, no! <laughs> it's really funny. It is really funny. Oh, but yeah, fantastic episode. Continue to kind of hit it out the park. Really like this fight scene. Completely different in terms of, like, if uh, the Bat Devil was all about scope, this one is just showing you, like, the the grossness of Chainsaw Man, which I really like. And, of course, that ED, f- fucking fantastic. Can't wait to see more all aboard the, <laughs> the power train. I also really liked it when you said uh, power is racist and someone said that's not going to stop me. <laughs> Oh, yeah, when he posted the picture of the black dude with the KKK member. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, that's gonna stop me. I fucking died. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> so, so funny. It is. <laughs> um, what do you feel about this episode, Zon? Uh, Fantastic episode. I love... See, the thing with Chainsaw Man is, like, it has these awesome crazy battles that are like so fun to watch but then mm-hmm. some of the best stuff is just like when they're being awful gremlins and aki's like fuck <laughs> like <laughs> he's I'm dealing with this shit um yeah it's true whole dynamic is great i love basically everything about the way that the three of them interact um just fucking 10 out of 10 yeah and Beautiful. we also got i forgot we also saw someone who's gonna show up later she showed up for like one sentence for like not even a sentence. She said yes, sir, and I think that was basically it. Um, oh, what Kobeni? Yeah, Kobeni. I just yeah. wanted to make a mention. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we did meet the other public, uh, public defense, whatever they're called. Yeah, we'll we'll get to know them a little bit more. But that was enough to make me go like, oh man, I can't wait to see <laughs> what's more to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone who read the manga is fucking. Poking up at Kobani, they're like, "Hey, wait a minute!" Yeah, every- <laughs> on everyone else is going, "What?" Her? <laughs> the, you- oh my god! What? What was this tweet that I saw? Some dude made about Kobani that was funny as fuck. Uh they posted this, the screenshot of her being in the anime, and finally, mm-hmm. and the, the caption was something like, "This is a big day for people who are too nervous to call the <laughs> dentist on the phone." <laughs> <laughs> That was great. I saw another one where it said, like, uh, I think her one saying sounded like this is what it sounds like when the Kobeni squeaky toy <laughs> goes off. Because this is very much. She goes like a. <laughs> That's all the notes she <laughs> That's the only sentence she gets in this episode is. <laughs> and that, that was enough. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah. <clears throat> That's Chainsaw Man 3 and 4. As always, you can check out chainsaw man we suggest it it's gonna be if you can't tell enough with how much fun me and zen are having you should really check out chainsaw man <laughs> yeah if you, there's like nothing i was talking about it with uh my fiance earlier and i was like is there anything i don't like about chainsaw man i don't think so <laughs> yeah I don't i just fucking love chainsaw man I, it really is something special. There is something to be said about it when it was, when it and Jujutsu Kaisen were going off at the same time. It was a thing of beauty, and now we're back to that specific beauty and with Chainsaw Man Part Two. But it was uh, you could definitely feel something was missing when it like went on, like a break as they prepared for Part Two. So I'm good. Definitely, to, I'm, yeah. yeah. 
So I'm glad to have it back here and be able to talk about this. And this anime was also long waited for a lot of people. And I'm also really glad that all the people who were freaked out over the CGI stuff, it just doesn't matter. <clears throat> no, that was a lot of uh, whining over nothing, which I think a lot of people probably figured that was going to be the case. But yeah. it was nice to have it confirmed. Yeah. Like when every listen, we all are afraid of getting One Punch Man season two. I think it's <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a reasonable, realistic fear. If if you if there is a video someone can do of the pure damage that season two of One Punch Man did to society as a whole, <laughs> I think you could have a very interesting video because I think that's honestly where it comes from from a lot of shonen things. Like, there's obviously examples of some other animes that were just like bad, like uh, Seven Deadly Sins had. An infamously terrible season <laughs> that yeah, was truly like, impressively god awful. Yeah, yeah com- compared to the quality that it was beforehand. Regardless of what you feel about the specific plot and the uh, weird child stuff, it was actually very well animated from season one and two. Let me tell you, some of the greatest problematic animated things ever existed in se- uh, season one and two of uh, Seven Deadly Sins. But then something happened, and it completely like change the way people see <laughs> that anime was just so bad <laughs> it it changes a person when an anime is that bad uh record of Agris war i think is the other one the one that was super hyped up on netflix and then it turned into like a png slider fest like i think yeah. everyone fears the bad anime adaptation yeah think- it's just like a constant like li- lingering dread of like yeah. this is gonna be the one Toriko might have made it a little bit longer if uh, the anime was just not as middling as it was. Because it's not necessarily bad, it's just not to the... It wasn't enough to save it, is what I'll say. (laughs) At least from what I understand, but I'm glad it's not the case with Chainsaw Man, but... Anyway, that's it for today's episode of Shonen Archive. Hopefully next week we'll be able to get back on track and be able to talk about some more Gintama and... Uh, at this point, we should probably just do two episodes of Chainsaw Man, so we meet up every two yeah, weeks. So we just stick with the chainsaw quota. Yeah, I think I think that that's fair enough, based off how crazy sometimes our work gets. I think every two weeks is perfectly acceptable for that. Um, and yeah, as always, you can find Zenrot over on Zenrot's channel that I've always remembered to link. I swear to God, where <laughs> he <laughs> where he does Shonen and Chill. Where if you want to have uh, arguments over Zen's uh, opinions on manga, you should do it on there. So the algorithm, so you, <laughs> so, you can, so the algorithm yeah, picks it up and boost. Yes, the algorithmic boost, as it were. Feel free to talk shit on Zen right there. With also, also the Ocean Man, if you want. <laughs> Oceanus, you can also talk shit on him yes, if you he's want. He's also there. <laughs> but it seems like for the most part, it seems like he'll say something, and then people will just say, "God damn you, Zen." <laughs> Whatever that is literally says. how it goes almost every time, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So feel free to go dump on Zen on Shonen and Chill. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> you can find uh, me on my channel, which is where you're watching this, where I do a whole bunch of other stuff. Whatever I feel like. Um, yeah, that's basically it. I wish I was more single-focused sometimes, but you know what? You can't control the ocean, Zen. Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do, man, you know? Exactly. If it that's wasn't for my... would be. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for my wild, erratic feeling of making videos, you would not have showed an archive. Exactly. All of Mm. our best stuff comes out of a random idea that happens at the last minute. Exactly. So anyway, that's the end of Shonen Archive, everyone. Until next time, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Say goodbye, Zen. See you later, everybody.